Good evening. Welcome to Western Heritage. We're glad you're here tonight. Um, a lot of things going on at the church. Let me just kind of keep everybody um, up to date on the projects. The, the children's uh, playground has been completed. Uh, thank you so much for everyone that helped and, and, and put into that. Um, uh, it looks amazing. We're excited to uh, uh, have the kids out there and get to play on it as soon as we get back to church as normal. Also, the floors have been redone. Um, they look amazing. The uh, Freddie Arnold has done a great job with those. And uh, also, the big project is uh, the concrete has been poured in the entryway and the handicapped parking spots. And uh, the stairs and the ramps have all been put into place. So we're waiting on handrails now. Hopefully, by the time we get to meet corporately in the first weekend in May, all of this will be done. Uh, we are certainly under budget, and things are looking really good. So just wanted to keep everybody uh, up to date on those things. Uh, this coming Sunday, we want to do a, a, another night of worship. We want to do this for our community. I, it would be so neat if all of our churches from Mills County, uh, First Baptist Church, Fellowship Baptist, um, uh, the Evangelistic Center, uh, even you know Center City and Mullen and all these other wonderful uh, churches uh, would, would have a night of worship with us. I know there's so many talented people throughout this community and county. Uh, just have a night of worship. So that's going to start at 6 o'clock Sunday. Uh, we're going to just, from your house, just bring, you know, get your, uh, uh, your favorite song, your favorite worship song, and let's worship the Lord together. It's a really, really neat way uh, for our community to, to worship together. So uh, that's what our plan is. Tonight we're going to open up a, a little bit of, of, of We Choose a Love and this series that we may do uh, in continuing uh, for the next couple of Wednesdays. I just want to break and tell you this coming Wednesday night, a week from now, Paul Olson's going to bring the word. Uh, I guess Dr. Paul Olson, he's an amazing man and uh, has been uh, coming here and he's just a blessing to us. So he's going to be bringing the word a week from now. So excited to bring that to you. So let's pray and we'll, we'll dive in. Lord, we love you. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for our time together. God, we pray that you meet us here. God, that you rest in our hearts tonight. Condition our hearts to receive your word, Lord. We pray for the conviction of the Holy Spirit to flow and fall. Lord, we, we, we want to know what you'd have us know tonight through your word. We love you and we thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. We choose love. I know it's hard sometimes to love your 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 neighbor and even scripture even goes on a little bit further and says love your enemy you know if he says um if he strikes you turn you know on one cheek turn and let him hit your other and if he takes your coat give him your shirt as well um it's 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 really uh mind-boggling how we're supposed to love one another to the level that Christ loves us and we're going to break that down a little bit tonight is how do we really love one another? Um, this says this, and he says one of them, an expert in the law, asked a question to test him. Teacher, talking to Jesus. Uh, and again, it wasn't one of his disciples. It was a, a, a Pharisee. He says, teacher, which command in the law is the greatest? And then Jesus, with no hesitation, uh, he answered him, I love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. I love how he says this, because it, we've maybe never broken it. We just say it in, in its entirety, and it's beautiful in its entirety. But love the Lord your God. A lot of us accept him as God, but the Lord part in the front of that is really important. Is he the Lord of your heart today? Is he the Lord of your life? Do, do, do you follow him do you listen to his instruction? Do you follow his teaching? Do you follow his instruction? Uh, because tonight we're going to unfold this. It's, it's very important that we love the Lord and we do what he's called us to do. And he says this, and again, it's the most, one of, one of the most important thing. He says, and the greatest, uh, this is the greatest and the most important command. And he says this, then the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, we live in this, this culture today where we're in, in, in just in, engulfed in news and news coverage, and we have a tw several 24-hour uh, news channels that are constantly pumping 
uh, news in us, and it's not even news at this point. It's just their interpretation of what is happening in our world. It's it's very, very hard to watch. I mean, me and Bodie were talking about this. You can't really watch more than about 20 minutes of the news before you get upset, depressed, or confused, or, or, or angry, or whatever. Um, but it's in, in this... In this world, we also have this this political um, uh, anger or or uh, sensitivity to a lot of things. If I throw a picture of of him up, you now that's our president, and, and we honor him, and, and we're supposed to be praying for him as Christians, um, whether he makes good choices or he makes bad choices, whether he um, says the right thing or says the wrong thing, whether he is full of pride or whether he is very humble. We're supposed to be praying for him. That's what we're called to do. Uh, you know, and it's it's maybe you're a Tr- Donald Trump fan and you're on his bandwagon. I'm not. This is not a political stance for me. I, I, it's not not my position. But what? But maybe you are a fan of his, and, and it's really easy for you to to love him and and to follow him and to to sympathize with him, whatever the case may be. Uh, maybe you're not, and it's really hard. Uh, to to listen to him and to put up with him or or maybe it's this you know here this Nancy Pelosi speaker of the house and you know even the picture some of you guys have getting enraged and your nostrils are flaring I mean you 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 have real issue uh, with this but this is also the same thing as this we're supposed to be praying for him we're supposed to be praying for her she's a leader in our our country and it's important as 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 we are Christians, that we really truly do this because the world is looking at us and seeing how we live and how we follow our leaders and how we pray for our leaders and how we submit to our leaders. Uh, No matter where you are, whether you're Republican or conservative or you're uh, a liberal or, uh, you know, far left, listen, at the end of the day, and this is what we stand on in this church, Christ died once for all, for all people. Did Jesus Christ die for her? Absolutely. Does he love her more than she can fathom? Absolutely. Did Jesus Christ die for him? Absolutely. Does he love him more than he can fathom? You bet. Right? It kind of levels everything out. And we start looking at things in a spiritual sense. Love one another. Love one another as Christ loves one another. I, I want to share this time with you because this is one of my great heroes. This is Dee Fleming. We buried him Monday. And a lot of you guys have heard this story, but I think it bears repeating on how you are to love one another because this is one of the greatest examples of how, how you love one another on this earth. When Dee Fleming was 1940, um, he... Uh, he went into the Army and the military service and the National Guard and went on from there. But um, he was a tech sergeant in World War II, and he received a salary of roughly $120 a month. And that, I had to kind of do some research in this to really see, so it may vary. I don't know exactly. I wasn't there. But $120 a month is what he lived off of. Uh, But he didn't live off that. This is the great thing about D. Fleming, was he took all of that money but $10. He put $10 in his pocket, and he sent $110 a month, roughly, to his mom every month for her to just live and to support the family and and to to just do that. And and it's so selfless. And when he got out of the military... I asked him the question. I said, did, did your mother have that money set aside for you for you when you come back? And he said, no. That was my mom's money. That was my blessing to her. I don't ask for anything in return. People like that don't, don't come around too often. Amazing, amazing man. A selfless man. And how you to love one another. So I'm going to break this down in 1 John. We're going to start 2 John this coming Sunday, but I want to break this down to you. Dear friends, let us love one another. That's the heart of what we're trying to, to get at tonight, and that's the whole everything hinges on this. Why? 
because love is from God. Where does where love come from? God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. All right? You may have great affection for people. You may have a great understanding for people. And you have sympathized and empathized with people. All these wonderful uh, uh, emotions are great. But do you love one another? Because that only comes from God. Why? Because God is love, as we see here in verse 8. The one who does not love does not know God. Because God is love. One of the most beautiful things that you can experience in this world is a, a Christian marriage loving God with your spouse and loving one another. Your marriage will grow so much in your Christ, in, with your Christian following of Christ and your, and your love for God that you have and you pour in not only to God but you pour into your spouse. There's nothing more beautiful than a, than a marriage that is focused on Christ. Why? Because God is love. We continue. Love like Christ. Bodhi's going to sing a song a little bit. Loving my Jesus. And it's, it's not enough. I know this is going to sound crazy. It's not enough that you just love like Christ. You love like Jesus. It's that you love others with that same intensity with that same heart and with that same understanding. It continues in verse 9 here. God's love was revealed uh, among us in this way. God sent his only or his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. That's big, guys. God's love was revealed among us. God's love is shown to the world. How? Because he sent his son that we might live through him, through Jesus, right? The Lord, remember? We're coming back to that point we, we, we started with is love the Lord your God, right? you got to live through Christ. you got to serve God through Jesus Christ. And when you do that, you really start showing and revealing to a world and a lost and dying world what true love looks like. And what true love looks like is God. Because God is love. Isn't that beautiful? We continue. Love consists in this. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. Do you know, before you were even a thought in your, in your parents' eyes, God knew you? God loved you? God God sent his son to die for you. It's not that he lo- we loved him first, right? It's that he loved us. While we were still yet sinners, Christ died for us, as Romans says. It's such a beautiful thing to know that the creator of everything is l- in love with us. It's wonderful. It's wonderful that, that we love him. That's great, right? I... I, I, I a lot of you guys have experienced uh, dating in high school, and you remember those wonderful memories. Uh, but also, there were some heartbreaks. Remember your first love, right? And then the heartbreak of of losing that first love. It's wonderful that you loved them, right? But what really mattered was their love for you. That maybe you never received, or maybe you didn't. They didn't love you with the same intensity that that you love them with it is it's this wonderful thing that we love him but the biggest thing in this verse is that he he loved us right and here's the big thing like i just said there's no way we can out love god because his very being is love it's so good to hear so we continue Dear friends, right? He said it at the beginning of verse 7, but now he's going to say it again, to kind of reiterate things in verse 11. Dear friends, like, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. That's very big. And, and, and it's important because uh, it doesn't, it, it, it does, did, that, did that say there in that, in that slide, if you're a conservative Christian, uh, if you're a Republican, did that say if you are a left uh, uh, Democrat, liberal? Did it, did it say that? Is there a clause in there? Is there, is there a, a, a loophole? No, 
is not. If God loves us this way, we have to, we must love one another. We, we must love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God remains in us and his love is perfected in us. I, I love being around people with gentle spirits that, that uh, love one another and you can see Christ in them. You could see, literally see the presence of God in them. They're gentle spirits. They're, gen- they're soft-spoken. They're, they're humble. They're not critical. They're not, you know, they're, they're, I love being around those people. Why? Because it shows God's love and we can see that. Now, I'm encouraging you to, to take a stand in this and be more like that yourself. I, I want to be more like that. I certainly haven't arrived or got it all figured out. But no one who's ever seen God, right? If, if No one has ever seen God. But he says, if we love one another, God remains in us. And, and, and His love is perfected in us. God, people are looking for Christ. And when they see you and they see, see the way you live and they see, they see the way you interact with people, does that show God to them? Does your life show God to a lost and dying world? That's big. That's our testimony, right? We continue. This is how we know that we remain in Him and, and He in us. How we remain in God and God remains in us. He has given assurance to us from His Spirit. This is how we know that we are like Christ, that we are like Christ because we love one another with that same intensity that Christ loves us with. That's big. That's big. And, and Bodhi's going to sing this song, Loving My Jesus, showing my scars, right? And he's going to continue. He says, telling my story of my mercy can reach you where you are. But this is the most important thing, and this is where I want us to understand this, this part of the song. I pray the whole world hears the cry of my heart. It's not enough that, that I know I love Jesus. I want to live a life where people have no doubt that I love Jesus, but more importantly than that, that I love them, right? To see all the ones that I love loving my Jesus. That's, that's the, the whole one of the chorus of the song is to see all the ones that I love loving my Jesus. How do we get them to that point? Is we love them with the same intensity that Jesus loves us with. No greater love than this, right? That a man lay down his life for a friend. That's intense, folks. That's really, really serious. And why does it matter? Because here's the verse 14. And we have seen and we testify. Our testimony is, is hinging on this, right? That the Father has sent His Son as the world's Savior. How, do, how does the world know that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world? Because we live it every day in our lives. And we, we are the ambassadors for that. We continue into verse 14 or 15 here. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and, and, and he in God, right? If we confess that with our mouth and believe in our heart, Jesus Christ is Lord, we shall be saved. We baptize Chase Love uh, Sunday morning with this exact thing. Right? We had J- Chase confess with his mouth that Jesus was Lord, right? And, and, and he died for our sins and was resurrected. And now he has that assurance that he's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And God remains not only in him, but in us. And we have to come to we have to come to know, uh, to believe the, the the love that God has for us. God is love, right? We have become we have known that because of our intense love, not only for Christ but for one another, that God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God. And God remains in him. Just reiterate, verse 15 and 16 are just kind of married together in one real thought. Now verse 17. In this, love is perfected with, with us. Right? Uh, it's not saying that you're, you're, gonna, you're, you're a perfect person. That's not it. 
But the whole point of this book, the whole point of, of, of 1 John, is that we can be this close, like this close to Jesus, to have a need and need relationship with Jesus. And he is, we are abiding in him, and he is close to us, and he's with us one-on-one, and he's looking us in the eyes. When we're that close to that, that perfect love, when we're that close to that, that Jesus Christ, our Savior, and we're living this close to him, our love, when we see other people, we're seeing through Jesus' eyes, and we start seeing, Jesus, what about that person? Oh, I love that person. That person's wonderful and, and fearfully made, and, and they have a wonderful mission and a purpose for God and for the kingdom. You start seeing things with spiritual eyes so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment Uh, For we are as he is in this world. That we have conquered death in the grave because we are this close to him. Right? And it's going to break this down in here. It says, there is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. Right? Who took our punishment? Christ on the cross. If, If God punishes us, then he's an unjust God because Jesus has took our punishment on the cross it is finished right so if we have this closeness with jesus and and he says you're living in this perfect love you're abiding in this perfect love that that love right there there's no fear in that why because there's no punishment that can touch you because that fear was on the cross and was taken away Uh, so the one who fears has not reached perfection in love you're distant. You're far away. You're separating. You're not abiding in, in Jesus. And, and, and you've you got to come to Jesus. I fear not, for I'm with you. Right? So that's important that we see the closer we are to God, the, the fears of this world, the things of this earth will grow what? Strangely dim. Verse 19, and we'll finish up here in the next three verses. We love because he first loved us. No greater love, right? We, we heard this in, in Romans earlier. Excuse me. He says, you know, uh, um, while we were still yet sinners, Christ died. But this is big. Verse 20 is very, very big because I think we as Christians and, and, and believers need to set. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For the person who does not love his brother... Uh, he has seen he he has seen that he that he has seen right cannot love the god that he has not seen let me break that down if if you sit here and say you love god i worship god god's my 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 savior right and you hate your neighbor or you hate the person that doesn't have the exact political view as you or or the exact same stance or you and here's the thing guys and and i see this all over facebook facebook has just turned into this political uh bomb and and guys you can't take it back you can delete the post but people once they see it they see it our job is to love our job is to to love even the people that we don't necessarily agree with that that May, may, you may think are hurting our country or hurting us as a people. God didn't ask you, uh, you know, to do that. He's asking you to love. He's asking you to pour into, in your prayer time, that person. Right? Love, love, love. Right? Because the world that, that doesn't see this uh, God, when they see you and the way you live, that may be the closest thing that, to God that they may ever encounter. And then last, lastly, verse 20. And we have this command from him, from Jesus, from God. The one who loves, the one who loves God must also love his brother. We got to love. We have to love with this intensity that Christ loves us with the intensity that we love Christ with. I see so many people that just fall on their face uh, and truly love God and, 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 and have wonderful, wonderful emotional connections with God. And it's so beautiful, and I think they're so genuine and real, right? But you can't just turn around in the next breath and curse your neighbor or have anger in your heart for your neighbor. That doesn't work. 
I think if our nation is going to truly go to to the Lord and come into revival and 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 God's going to hear our hearts like a second chronicle says right first thing we've got to do is start learning to love one another like he, he, he we we got to love Jesus we know that and we do because he's been so good to us he's given us everything he's given us eternal life he's given us uh, this wonderful salvation he's given us this wonderful spirit right but we have to go and share that love with this lost and dying world no matter no matter your 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 political stance or your 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 motivation love the lord your god with all your heart your soul and your mind and love your neighbor as yourself that's the message tonight we choose love here at the church we love our church family but we also love mills county we love this nation we love this world and we know that the only way we can have true revival is not only love God, but love one another. God bless you. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Lord, we love you. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for our time together. God, we pray uh, for everything that's going on in our world, Lord, that you have your way. Lord, we pray for the leadership of our country. God, that uh, uh, they, they come to more than anything a, a true relationship with you. God, that you pour into their hearts and their lives, God, that they they see your love, they they feel your love as we're saying this prayer tonight, God, that you're changing hearts and minds. God, we love you and we thank you for the things that you've done in our community, in our church. God, we pray for the continuation of that. Uh, God, if there there's people hurting in our in our country, in our county, in our community, God, that we can, um, Lord. Speak to them and, 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 and show the love that you want us to show. God, we give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.